This video is sponsored by Ikigai Film Lab. So what's the go with Fujifilm these days? Like, do you even film, bro? But seriously, today we are going to put a big rumor to the test. So keep watching to find out the truth about Fujifilm in 2023. So Fujifilm have been discontinuing stocks left, right, and center, focusing on the big earners like Fuji Instax and just being generally cagey about what they have planned for film. On the other hand, we have seen Kodak bring back stocks like gold in 120 and release statements and info that seemingly point to them being committed to manufacturing film for the future. We were all on such a high with the announcements of 2022, and it really felt like us as film shooters had some choice in what we could load up in our cameras. However, short supply or rather no supply and the price increase has really got that analog anxiety bubbling once again. Well, guys, I'm here to tell you that we may have lost another film stock, but also gained a film stock, but it's the same film stock. It's just in a different package. It's really confusing. I wanted to know what was really going on and hopefully answer the question once and for all, is Fuji Color 200 really just Kodak Gold? to enlist some professional help in the form of experienced film lab technicians who have seen their fair share of the original Fuji emulsion that we know and Kodak Gold. So I turned to my friends at Ikigai Film Lab who dev and scan all of my film beautifully and are also sponsoring today's video. They kindly hooked me up with two of the exact same cameras, which is very important when you are comparing film stocks and a roll of Kodak Gold and the new North American Fuji Color 200 film. It did feel kind of weird to be going out and shooting two of the exact same cameras and taking photos of the exact same things, but it was definitely necessary for this experiment. So I could keep track of what I was doing. I put this green strap on the camera that had Fuji and the gold strap on the one that had Kodak Gold in it. Very clever, I know. These straps are from Double Film and they are linked below. If you want to grab one, I get lots of questions about them and they're super fun. So let's familiarize ourselves with the Fuji C200 that we all know and love. Often praised for its gorgeous Fuji greens, I actually find the reds to be really impressive in this film stock. The guys at Ikigai confirmed that Fuji C200 reds are a lot more vibrant than Kodak stocks other than Ekta, of course, which tend to be more kind of orangey, yellowy in their reds. Fuji C200 has been a go-to emulsion for me for many years as it was always pretty easy to find and a good price, but that's not so much the case anymore. I personally haven't shot much Kodak Gold, but people love this stock. They rave about it and say it's very nostalgic and has that kind of childhood family snapshot feel to it. Okay, so now we've familiarized ourselves with those ones. Let's take a look at the two rolls I shot of Kodak Gold and the new Fuji C200. So Ikigai have both a Noritsu and a Frontier scanner, but for this test comparison, they chose to use the Frontier. Owner of the lab, Pete, said he chose the Frontier as they can run multiple scanners at the same time and switch between them with a button to compare the colors. Pete noted that the only difference was framing slash minor exposure differences due to both cameras having minuscule shutter speed differences. I shot these cameras on aperture priority, so I'm pretty sure the exposures would have been the same, but there could have been minor differences. So let's look at some of the scans. Here we can see that they basically look exactly the same. There are no differences in the colors, greens, or reds. The way they are handling highlights seems to be exactly the same, and there is no cast of any one color over either scan to suggest that one is Fuji and one is gold. We did some test shots for skin tones as well, so Lux took some shots of me at this super lush location, and I think 
when you see them side by side like this, there are no differences in skin tones whatsoever. I'm definitely not seeing those really vibrant reds like I mentioned with the original Fuji C200, which kind of makes me really sad. So as far as skin tones go here, I actually prefer Fuji C200. We have shot a lot of that stock and had really great results from it. I'm going to pop some up here so you guys can see those really nice skin tones. I think these shots with Kodak Gold, they do have a real kind of yellowy tinge to them that I'm not a huge fan of. None of these shots look reminiscent of the Fuji C200 that we all know. So if you've done any Googling online about this rumor, you may have seen the Reddit post where somebody has shared the spectral sensitivity chart for both of the films and they look exactly the same in the curves. I think that paired with now seeing the two films shot side by side like this, it can confirm that they are definitely the same film. So now we know the truth, let's talk about what this means for Fujifilm in 2023. How do we as a community feel about kind of being misled in what a film stock really is? There are all sorts of rumors flying around in the analog community. So let's discuss some of those, unpack and see what we can decipher from this. Please feel free to comment below with what you think is going on or is going to happen in 2023 with Fujifilm. Before we get into that discussion, I want to talk about today's sponsor, Ikigai Film Lab. So if you've been watching the channel for a while, you would have definitely heard me talk about my Film Lab Ikigai a bunch of times. They have been in the biz for many years now, and I switched to them about a year ago from lots of word of mouth recommendations, which are always the ones you can trust the most. So Ikigai offer a range of services like C41, black and white, and E6 film processing, along with high quality scans that have honestly taken my photography to a whole new level. The attention to detail and knowledge of the team at Ikigai really ensures I'm getting the most out of each frame and that I can trust that my film is in good hands, which is very important. Plus, it saves me so much time in post-production as the scans look so beautiful and I literally just don't need to touch them at all. Ikigai have a flawlessly simple ordering form, which makes it really easy. And they offer things like the choice of a Noritsu or Frontier scanner, which are capable of really high resolution images. You can also request things like contact sheets and the team will give you little notes if there's anything funky going on with your camera that could be affecting your shots. Not only that, the team have recently started a recycling initiative that is the first of its kind in Australia, and it turns those pesky plastic film canisters into products that film photographers can use. This recycling program is open to customers and any film lab nationwide. I am super proud to be a customer of Ikigai and back their sustainable approach to film photography. It's just another reason to send your film their way. But all of that aside, finding the right lab will hugely contribute to your success as a photographer, whether that's professionally or just for your own artistic expression and personal projects. It's a real game changer. So what are you waiting for? Go check them out over on Instagram and click the link that I have pinned in the comments to check out their website, see what they're up to and try Ikigai Film Lab for yourself. All right, so back to Fujifilm and what they're really up to. So some people think that Fujifilm haven't even made film for years and what we're seeing is being pulled from freezers. Others think that Fujifilm are winding things up in the film department completely and focusing on their Fuji digital cameras, which are hugely successful and things like Instax that make them a lot of money. An important thing that I would like to note here is that as sad as it is that Fujifilm have discontinued so many great stocks and now Fuji C200 is gone, don't forget that Fuji still make chemicals to develop film. Losing chemicals would be far more dire to the continuation of film photography than if Fujifilm just discontinued all of their film stocks. It's also worth mentioning that Kodak don't even make E6 chemicals anymore. In Ikigai's opinion, C41 chemicals from Fuji are the best and the cleanest. So what they're lacking in film stocks, they are making up in chemicals. But what does all of this mean for us consumers? Less choice is obviously bad because it opens things up to a monopoly, Kodak. Rumors and allegations are flying around online that Kodak are simply putting their prices up because they are the only major players in the game now. I don't personally agree with that. I think it's warranted as they, you know, need the resources, they need to train people, and I think that they are making a commitment to film for the future. I am, however, hoping that things do equalize on the price side. 
What I think the real issue here is, is we have two of the same film stocks, but they are packaged differently and possibly priced differently. The transparency of the whole situation is kind of questionable. So why don't Kodak just make more Kodak gold and sell it as Kodak gold? Why are they selling it to Fuji and not just keeping it for themselves? Comment below if you have any thoughts on this because maybe I'm missing something. So I guess the takeaway from this is if you see Fuji C200 priced at $12 and Kodak Gold priced at $15 or whatever price it is, you know that you can go with the cheaper option because essentially they're the same stock. That's if you can find either of them anywhere right now. It's important to know as a consumer what you are actually paying for. And I think transparency is really important. Hopefully Fujifilm's intentions when it comes to film will become clearer throughout 2023 and Kodak will kind of get it together on their half and we'll see prices come down to a more reasonable level later in the year. So don't forget to check out Ikigai Film Lab. I have pinned a comment so you can go over to their website, check them out and get those pro scans hitting your inbox.